everyone welcome back to my channel and to another video i hope you're all really well and you're having a good week so today's video is going to be a catch-up video i've got a few fabrics to share some sewing plans some quite ambitious sewing plans <laughs> which i'll share with you in a bit some sewing works in progress some knitting works in progress and then a little bit of reading chat as well so i hope you'll enjoy today's video if you are new to my channel i post lots of sewing content sometimes knitting and other crafts as well but mainly sewing content so lots of fabric hauls sewing plans sew along things i've been making and things like that so if you're into sewing and making as well, I'd love you to consider subscribing. And if you are a regular viewer, thank you so much for joining me again today. And in case you're interested in what I'm wearing today, I've realised recently that I keep forgetting to share what I'm wearing. So if you are interested today, I'm wearing one of my Megan Nielsen Jarra sweatshirts in this lovely Mind the Maker Jacquard knit fabric, which is really nice and textured. Um, it's in this lovely rose pink colour and it's super soft and cozy as well and you'll know if you watch my channel a lot that i love the jara sweatshirt pattern and i have quite a few versions of that sweatshirt so it's definitely one of my favorites so with all that said let's get into the video and i'll start off with some sewing plans so basically in um two weeks time february half term we have a holiday booked to go to dubai um, so this has been, if you've planned a holiday in Covid times, you'll know that this holiday has been one that has just been so up and down, like we haven't known whether or not it's definitely going to go ahead because the travel rules and restrictions and everything kept changing. There was so much Covid testing that you needed to do, which added to the cost and everything. And we were just like, we don't know if we're going to be able to go or not. And still two weeks before, um, we still don't really quite know whether or not we're going to be able to go because we have to have a PCR test like 48 hours or even 24 hours I think before we go so you literally don't know till the last minute if you're actually going to be able to go on holiday or not so it's been one of those holidays where I've just felt as though I can't really look forward to it or plan for it or anything like that because it's just been also up in the air um, but I think that's life generally really you never know if something's gonna absolutely definitely happen to you so I've just had to try and go with the flow um, but anyway, I'm going off the point now. What I'm trying to say is that we have this holiday booked and normally I would be advanced planning for things I want to make for my holiday and sort of making them in the lead up to it. Um, and now two weeks before the day, I've thought of three things that I'd really like to get made before our holiday. So I'm going to just share them with you now. <laughs> So basically, I don't know if anyone's been to Dubai, um, but we were a little bit worried about the dress code there, or particularly me, um, for females over there, I wasn't quite sure about the dress code, but as far as we can tell, it is quite westernised, and it doesn't matter too much about what you wear, but out of respect, I think it's good to cover your shoulders and cover your legs as much as you can. Um, so with that in mind, none of my dresses are very short anyway. But one of the things I really want to get made is another Davenport dress because I love my Davenport dress and I think it's a really nice, flattering, sort of modest style on me and it comes to just below knee length. So I thought that would be a really nice thing to make. So here's the Davenport dress pattern. If you haven't already seen it, you'll know if you follow me that I've made a couple of versions of this already. And I absolutely love it. I really love the boho style of it. It's got loads of frills, a lovely drawstring waist, and some pretty flutter sleeves here. And uh, yeah, I just love the style. So I want to make a sleeveless version, which I think will be really good for taking away with us. And I'm just going to literally take the sleeves out. Um, and then bias bind the armholes. So I am going to have a quick look at the pattern and just make sure that I think the armholes don't need taking in or anything because on my Darling Ranger's dress when I took the sleeves out I did actually take in the shoulder a little bit and then narrow it down to underneath the arms. Um, so I'm just going to have a look at that but I think with this one it's going to be a little bit different because you do have the flutter sleeves so that's going to sort of um, reduce the need for taking in the shoulder strap. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have made the Davenport sleeveless, let me know how you did it. I did ask on Instagram and the most popular method of doing it was simply to just buy a spy in the armhole. So I think that's probably what I'll go for. And some people did say that they made a facing, which is also a really good idea. But I think for me, I'll probably just buy a spy in the armholes and see how that goes. So yeah, that's my first plan. And I'll just show you the fabric that I'm going to use for that. 
So this is the lovely fabric I want to use for that Davenport dress. It's a lovely viscose from Stoff and Still, which I brought back in last summer. Um, so it's on a navy background and there's some really nice sort of um, taupe coloured leaves on it and then some pale blue flowers. And I just thought that would be really pretty as a Davenport dress. I think it would be lovely and cool as well. And as I say, the fit of it is just really quite modest because then your shoulders are covered with the frills and the Davenport actually comes to just below my knee. So I think that'll be a really nice length as well. So yeah, I'd really like to get that one made up before we go. The next one is more of a fabric that I'd like to use to make something to go away with and it's this lovely Lady McElroy viscose which I have shown before and I have um, shared some plans for this fabric before um, but basically in the summertime I find it really nice and comfortable to wear something like a pair of Sophia trousers or Sophia culottes um, and a midi skirt and then just a simple t-shirt and that for me is a really lovely comfortable cool outfit. So with this lovely fabric I really want to make either another pair of Sophia culottes or um, a midi skirt of some sort. Um, so this fabric is really lovely, really soft and smooth and I think it would suit either of those makes. I just am a bit undecided at the moment as to which one to go for. So let me know um, which one you think I should go for. I've made a couple of versions of the Sapphire trousers now and they're just so quick and easy to whip up and they're really lovely to wear as well. So I know that would be a good one to make before we go. Um, but the other possible plan I have for that fabric is my original plan, which was this lovely North Coat um, skirt by Stylark again. And um, this one I kind of brought, I didn't realise it was for a knit fabric when I brought it. I'd always planned to make this skirt from that Lady McElroy viscose fabric, but when it arrived I realised it said knit skirt. Um, but I'm thinking that I could probably still make this skirt up in a viscose because really it's just an elasticated waist skirt. And surely it's not going to matter too much if I use a viscose instead of a knit or maybe it will, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking if I just use this pattern and use that fabric, elasticate the waist, maybe make it into a midi skirt. There can't be too much to go wrong with that, can there? <laughs> Let me know if you think there could be. Um, but yeah, possibly a midi skirt using this pattern and just changing it up a little bit. So either Sapphire trousers or midi skirt with that lovely Lady McElroy fabric. And then lastly in plans, um, I recently brought this really nice um, bamboo jersey from Minerva. Um, I just bought this really because I wanted to buy some bamboo jersey to try it because um, I've not used it before and lots of people had recommended it to me in my hunt for the perfect drapey t-shirt fabric. Um, I think this one was on sale or it was discounted or something so that's why I picked it up. Um, but with this I'd really actually like to make a simple t-shirt style dress that I can wear on holiday around the pool or on the beach or something, something that you can just kind of slip on um, when you're out and about over a swimsuit or whatever. And I have about a metre and a half of this and it's really wide so it should be enough to make a t-shirt dress. So I'm thinking what I'd like to make is another version of the Tabitha dress by Tilly and the Buttons from the Make It Simple book. Um, this is really lovely actually. I'm really pleased I tried the bamboo jersey because it is really soft. Slightly more expensive but I think it's probably worth it. So this is the Tabitha dress if you haven't seen it already. It's basically just a t-shirt style bodice um, and then a skirt attached and then there's a drawstring waist. And you might remember that I actually made a version of this in summer and um, I wasn't very happy with the neckline on it. I think I put it in too tight anyway but the neckline on the Tabitha t-shirt does come up quite high. Um, as it does in a lot of Tilly patterns actually. I think their necklines always come quite high. Um, so if I do make this Tabitha dress, I'm actually gonna alter the neckline slightly to make it a little bit wider. And I might actually take the neckline from the sweatshirt that I'm wearing here, actually the Jara sweatshirt, because I really like this neckline. It's just high enough really. I don't like anything too high and I just really like the way that it sits. So I might actually trace this neckline onto the Tabitha pattern and see if I can just use that neckline and hopefully that will make the dress more comfortable because otherwise I did really like the Tabitha dress. I think, um, yeah, the neckline for me just made it that little bit uncomfortable. So that's another plan that I have that I'd really like to get made up before we go away. So we'll see if that happens. So those three plans might be a little bit ambitious and I'm not quite sure how much of that I'll get made in the next two weeks. Sometimes I'm a bit more speedy on a deadline actually. I think 
sometimes I, um, if I know I don't have a lot of time, I'm quite good at sort of getting things done quite quickly and sometimes I work better that way. So we'll see. If I can at least get the Davenport dress done, I think I'll be really pleased with that anyway. So on to works in progress. So I have two works in progress, two things on the go at the moment, and one of them is another holiday type make, um, and that is a swimsuit. So it's really funny actually, because there are two things that I said I would never be interested in sewing, and one of them is jeans, and one of them was swimwear. <laughs> but um, recently, in my hunt for last minute holiday clothing, I realized I could really do with another swimsuit. And um, I hate buying swimsuits anyway, because I can never find anything that I'm happy with. Um, quite fussy about how things sit and how low they are, probably like a lot of us are. Um, so I really wanted something that I could feel comfortable in, and that was also nice as well. And obviously shopping for swimwear in January, there isn't actually a lot around in ready to wear websites and high street shops and things like that. So I wasn't having much luck. And then I thought, this is silly. I should just try and make myself something that I'm going to feel comfortable in and like. So I had a quick look around for swimwear patterns and I came across this one. This is one that I've seen lots of people make on Instagram and on YouTube. It's the Cottesloe um, swimsuit by Megan Nielsen. Um, so basically it has four options, so you can make a one piece, you can make a really lovely tie back one piece as well, and then there are two two piece set options, so you can make more of a bikini one with a low waist, or you can make a pair of high waist bottoms and um, a bit more of a sportswear style crop top I guess with a band underneath and I was really attracted to this version version D with the humongous pants <laughs> I really like the high waist pants and that's what I was looking for really or high waist bottoms I should say not pants um I just don't feel that comfortable showing too much tummy probably like a lot of us don't and I know I probably shouldn't feel like that and none of us should but um I think it's just how you feel isn't it so anyway, I wanted something that provided quite a lot of coverage and I think this would be a really good one. And having seen lots of other people make this one up, I know that it's quite a flattering fit on most body shapes. Um, so that's why I went for this one. So I'll just show you where I am in my work in progress. So basically I'm making a swirl of version D at the moment. So I needed to buy some swimmer elastic and I ended up getting some from Fabricland online and while I was there shopping for elastic I picked up this really really cheap lycra fabric um, just so that I could have a play around and try and get the fit right on this swimsuit and everything. Um, so yeah this is a cheapy lycra, I've got absolutely loads of it and um, I've made up the bottoms as you can see here. Um, so yeah, this was an interesting experience and I'm not sure whether swimwear is something that I'm going to particularly enjoy sewing, but it will be something that if I can get right it will be really handy. So yeah, I think where I struggled was just not having made one before, I wasn't quite sure if what I was doing was right. So for example, putting the elastic in the legs, um, I found that the elastic measurements didn't stretch very much and I was worried that I didn't have enough stretch in there. Um, so I did it as the pattern suggested and tried them on and they actually fit really nicely and they do hug my legs and underneath my bottom <laughs> quite nicely. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with the fit of these and they come up really nice and high on your waist. They come up to your proper waist, if you like, um, so they're really quite high. So you might be able to tell holding up here that I've actually put my waistband on the back to front so you can see my overlocking there. So I was in... I was being so hasty trying to get these done so that I could try them on and see if they fit that I actually did that part wrong. But I actually like this stripey lycra fabric a lot more than I was expecting to. I was never expecting to actually wear these. Um, but I do actually like the stripey fabric so I think I'm going to see if I can salvage these and take the waistband off and redo it. So that's the bottoms and that's where I'm at with those and I'm quite pleased with the fit of those and everything so I think I'm okay to make my proper version of the bottoms anyway. And then this is the top. So this is only half made, so it does need a bottom band adding to it. It looks quite short holding it like that. Um, so I've actually raised the back of this um, because the back of the pattern is actually quite low and I wanted it to be a bit higher. So I've just um, redrawn the pattern to meet the front of the um, top <laughs> so that the front and back are the same height, basically. Um, so this, when I tried it on, it does fit quite nicely, but it's a little bit shorter than I would like. So I'm actually going to add on an inch to this top and then I'm going to cut it out again because I do have quite a lot of this fabric as I said. 
um, and then add the bottom band and then hopefully that will be just right. So yeah, I feel a bit as if I'm doing this floundering around and not quite knowing what I'm doing really because it's all new, especially adding the elastic and everything. But I think, um, yeah, I think if I can get it done, I'll be really pleased and proud that I've got something that I've made that I feel comfortable in. So once I've finished playing around with the twirl of the top and bottoms of those, I've actually got some nicer swimwear fabric to make a better version in. And this was from Sew Me Sunshine. Um, it's just a swimwear fabric. It's in a lovely navy blue, which is actually showing up quite bright on the camera. It's actually quite dark, really, in real life. So I'm just going to make a plain version. And then what I'd really like to do, if it works well, is put a little frill around the top and maybe around the bottoms as well and it actually suggests that you can do that in the pattern where it's um giving you suggested hacks and things and I think that would look really pretty and it would add something really nice to a plain swimsuit so once as I say once I've finished with that twirl and fiddling around and getting it right I'm gonna cut myself another version in this fabric and um, I also have some proper swimwear lining for that one uh, and it's in this nice off-white colour so that just goes inside your main swimsuit fabric and provides an extra bit of coverage and comfort. So yeah, I'm hoping to get on with the rest of that this week. So I actually have four things to try and get done before we go on holiday in two weeks. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> and then next in works in progress, I actually have my Logan jacket. So um, first of all, I just want to explain that I was going to do the Logan jacket as a sew along. Um, but basically, when I came to make this on Tuesday this week, it was so dark in the house um, that it would have just been impossible to film or I wouldn't have been able to film very well anyway. And I can't have the lights out and the sewing machine and everything all at the same time because I just end up tripping over everything. So I thought I'd make my first version, make all the alterations and everything on it. Um, and make a twirl up and as I always plan to do I've always been planning to make a more shacket like version of this with a wool fabric which should be on its way from Minerva so when that arrives I will get around hopefully to filming a sew along of the Logan shacket but here's the pattern anyway if you haven't seen it before um, so it's a lovely oversized shirt pattern which you can wear as a jacket depending on which fabric you use so so for my finished version, I want to make it up in like a thin wool fabric that I can then use for outerwear. And I really like style like patterns at the moment. I find their designs really on trend and um, I really like the drawings that they use and everything. So yeah, that's the Logan jacket pattern. And here is my finished twirl. So this came together so nicely. So basically the other day on Tuesday, I started piecing together my PDF pattern um, at 11 o'clock in the morning, I also made some alterations, I've shortened it quite a bit and um, I'd managed to get it cut out and sewn up in um, about four hours so I was done by four o'clock that evening and it was just one of those things that I thought was going to take forever, I thought it was going to be a really intricate sew, I thought it was going to take me ages but actually it's a really quite simple design and it took me far less time than I thought it was going to take. So this is my first version, I made it in a lovely plaid brushed cotton fabric from Minerva, it's just a really simple cotton and it was so nice to work with. Um, I haven't bothered to pattern match exactly, don't judge, <laughs> um, but on the sides I haven't bothered about pattern matching or anything too much because I just wanted this to be a twirl. So basically I've shortened the back and front. I've also shortened the pockets because the pockets are absolutely huge and I didn't want them to overwhelm the whole shirt. And um, I took quite a bit out of the pocket height, um, but I think next time I make it, I'm gonna take a bit out of the width as well because they do tend to overwhelm the whole shirt a little bit. So I think that's one alteration I'm gonna make next time. But yeah, I absolutely love this. As I say, it's a really simple pattern. The most difficult part about it is the collar, but even that, um, the pattern was drafted really nicely and everything just fit in really well. And it came together really easily. I think, um, as I'd been told, style art patterns, they are on the vague side. So the instructions were quite vague. But I found that I didn't really mind that this time. I felt like it gave me a bit of creative license, if you like, to just do things as I wanted to do them. And I didn't need to follow the pattern exactly. So that was quite nice as well. So yeah, that's my first version of the Logan jacket. Hold it up there so you can see the curved bottom. It's really nice. Um, oh, I'll show you the back as well. So the back, if you can see it in this fabric, has um, a dipped yoke at the back there, like your traditional shirt would have. So I've actually just shortened the bottom part of the pattern and not the yoke. 
Um, so it's just the bottom part of the back that's shorter. So I've still got quite a big, nice um, dipped yoke as well. So more details on that to follow. And I will talk more about how I shorten the pattern and how much I shortened it and everything either in my next makes video or when I come around to doing the sew along. So next I thought I would just quickly share about a couple of knitting projects I have on the go. So at the moment, very unlike me, I have three knitting projects on the go and they're all actually We Are Knitters kits. <laughs> um, and yeah, a bit unlike me, but they're all different kinds of knits. So that's how I'm justifying it at the moment. So the first one that I'm making is the Cara sweater kit. And I'll pop an image in here so you can see what the finished jumper looks like. It's a really simple garter stitch knit pattern. Um, I've finished the back already. I started this in the Christmas holidays. Um, and the back is done. So I'll just hold it up here. Um, so this is a really, really simple project. It's all knit in garter stitch. And the back is simply a rectangle um, with a little bit of ribbing at the end to give it a little bit of shape. And um, as I say, it's done in garter stitch, but it's um, knit with the wave wool, which is this one. So it has a really nice texture to it, where it goes from thick to thin. I'll hold this up here. So if I hold the little strand of yarn there, you can probably tell that some of it is thick and some of it goes really thin. And that's how you get this really nice, bumpy, bobbly texture. So even though it is a plain garter stitch, it does have a little bit of interest um, and texture to it. So I'm really enjoying that one. So I'm kind of halfway up the front now. Um, I need to knit 86 rows. I think I've got about another 20 to do. And then I need to shape for the V-neck, which will be interesting because I've never made a V-neck jumper before in knitting. So that will be something new. This pattern is actually described as an intermediate level pattern really, and I'm not quite sure why, because it's really simple, <laughs> especially um, if you're a beginner and you just need to know really knit and purl stitches. I guess with the decreases for the V-neck, that could be considered a little bit difficult, so maybe that's why they've marked it as intermediate. But I would actually recommend this to a beginners, actually. I think it would be a really nice beginner project. It knits up really quickly, because it's on really chunky needles and the yarn or the wool is really chunky as well. So that's that one, and I'm really enjoying that one because I can just sit and watch the telly in the evening doing that, and it doesn't take a lot of concentration at all. And I'm really enjoying knitting on straight needles, actually, because recently I've just been knitting on my circular needles. And um, I have to say that We Are Knitters needles are really good quality, actually. They feel really nice to knit with. In the past, when I've bought a kit, I tend to not include the needles because I tend to have quite a lot of needles that I can just use, but their wooden needles are actually really nice to knit with. So I might actually try and get a bit of a collection going of those because they're really nice to knit with. And then the next one is actually a kit that I had for Christmas. Um, it's the Toucan Snood and Warmers kit. And you can see the picture here. If it's easier, I'll pop a picture in as well so that you can see the detail a bit more. So this is um, a snood and some fingerless mittens that you just knit. And it has a really lovely textured pattern to it. Um, I want to say lace, but it's not really lace because there aren't any holes in it. So it's just um, a wavy kind of pattern. <laughs> so this is where I'm at with it at the moment and I'm finding it really nice to knit. So it does take a bit more concentration, this one. It's on a 20 row repeat. So there are quite a lot of different rows to get your head around and I'm having to really read the instructions and follow them all the time. So it's not one that you can just sit there, or for me anyway, it's not one that you can just sit there and absent-mindedly knit in front of the TV, but I'm finding it really nice. I find lace and patterns really nice to knit because I think they just take your mind off of things. They're really mindful to do because you can't really think about anything else other than what you're doing and you're having to keep count all the time um, and everything. So uh, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying that. And the yarn for this one is the baby wool, or the wool I should say. I always get mixed up between saying yarn and wool, but this one's called the baby wool and it's really soft. And this is knit on size five needles. Um, it's got a little bit of sort of fluffiness to it and it's really soft and cozy. So I wanted to start that one at the same time as my Cara sweater, just because obviously it's a winter type thing to have. And I really wanted to have the snood and the mittens done before winter ends. And I do think that if I get on with it, it'll be quite a quick project to knit, especially the mittens. I think they will come up quite quickly because they're just rectangular um, and the pattern should be really nice to knit on those. So yeah, I'm really enjoying those two projects. The other one that I've got on the go is the Thread Sweater by We Are Knitters as well. I'll put a picture in here. 
Um, but I've disregarded that one for the time being. I've put it to one side just because I feel like that's a bit more of a summery knit. Um, so I want to get these two done first really so that I can take advantage of them if I get them done in time before it gets too warm. So those are my two knitting projects. And then finally I just thought I'd share a book that I finished that I got for Christmas and it's this one, it's The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I know this is a really popular book so probably a lot of people out there have read it already. This is one that's been on my to read list for ages um, and I finally got around to finishing it, had it for Christmas, it took me about two weeks to read I think. It's quite a thin book as you can probably see but what I liked about this is that the chapters are so short so I just bring it down with me in the morning and I could just read a chapter here and there and before I knew it I'd got through the book and it's a really nice book. It's definitely a different style book to what I'm used to. Um, it's more sort of, I don't know what you call it, I, I don't want to I, want to, I don't know how to describe it, I want to say futuristic but that's definitely not the right word. Fantastical maybe? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean, if, I've read, if you have read this book you'll know what I mean but um, yeah, anyway. It's the kind of book that makes you think about life and your purpose um, in life and things like that and I just found it really nice, um, really easy to read quite um, emotional in places uh, and you really feel for the characters and things like that so yeah I'd highly recommend that. If you haven't already read The Midnight Library then I think it's a really good one that you'll probably enjoy reading and read really quickly if you're a quick reader which I'm definitely not actually. I'm quite a slow reader so I did read this one really quickly which is always a sign of a good book I think. Okay, so I think that's everything. I think I've caught you up to date on all of my sewing plans and my works in progress and my knitting works in progress. And I hope it wasn't too much of a long waffly video. <laughs> if you have enjoyed the video, then please do give it a like. And as I say, I'd love you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you are a regular viewer and you haven't yet subscribed, I'd really love you to click the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel because that really does help me in the YouTube algorithm. And so just giving the video a like as well and I always love to hear from you in the comments so please do let me know um, any advice or any comments on anything that I've shared today and do let me know as always what you're working on and what you're making let me know what you're knitting as well if you're a knitter and what you're reading as well if you're a reader have a lovely day everyone and I'll see you in my next video bye